Hey, this is Aaron with Dynamic Perception. In the last video, I showed you the absolute basics of using the MX2 controller and the Stage Zero Dolly. I showed you how to do a simple video move. I introduced you to the first time-lapse mode, continuous mode. And then I also introduced you to the tooth method, which is a simple rule of thumb for making your time-lapse calculations really simple. Now I'd recommend you watch that video before this one because that one dealt with the basics and this time I'm gonna delve into some a little bit more advanced concepts. Today I'm gonna to show you the shoot, move, shoot mode, which is the other time-lapse mode. So with continuous mode, basically you start the motor movement and you get continuous movement with shoot, move, shoot, it does exactly what the name implies. It shoots, it moves a little, it shoots, it moves a little, and on and on. Continuous mode's really easy to set up, and shoot, move, shoot takes a few more steps. In general, shoot, move, shoot mode is good for longer exposures and longer intervals, and continuous mode is good for shorter exposures and shorter intervals. For example, on the extreme end of the spectrum, you'd want to use shoot, move, shoot for astro time lapses where the exposures and intervals are quite long. An example using continuous on the other end of the spectrum would be shooting video at 24 or 30 frames per second where the exposures are only a fraction of a second. So now I'm gonna show you how to set up shoot, move, shoot mode. Continuous is the default time-lapse mode. So the first time you're using the MX2 or if you reset the memory, it's gonna be on continuous. So we'll have to go through the menu system to get it to shoot, move, shoot. So I showed you before that the left and right buttons are used to change between the different input fields and that the up and down buttons can toggle the values of those. Now there's another button to the left of those, which is the enter button. Now if you press that, you go into the main menu and you can navigate through the main menu using the up and down buttons to find the item you want to go to. And when you find it, you press enter and again you can go up and down and anytime you want to go back, you hit the right button. Now to change to shoot, move, shoot, we'll navigate to the motor SL mod, which is in the settings menu. So from the home screen, I'm going to press enter, and then I'm going to press down until I find the settings menu, and I'll press enter, and now I'll press down until I get to motor SL mod, I'll press enter again. Now the value is currently at pulse, also known as continuous which is the default. And I'm gonna press up or down to change that to interleave, also known as shoot, move, shoot. And then I'll press enter to save it. Now I'll press the right button to get back to the home screen and we're set. There are two shoot, move, shoot modes, fixed and calculated. For new users, we wanna make sure that we're gonna use fixed. So we'll navigate through the menu system to turn fixed SMS to on. I'll hit enter, I'll go to axis one and press enter again. Scroll down to fixed SMS, press enter, and it is on, not off. I'll keep it on, I'll press enter, and I'll press right to get back to the home screen. Now that fixed SMS is on, the motor values on the main screen won't show the speed anymore, but instead will show distance in inches per shot. So now's the time to get the settings right on your camera to get a good shot. So, so you want to adjust the shutter speed and the ISO and the f-stop. And of utmost importance, you want to make sure your camera is on manual mode and that you're using manual focus. If you use anything but manual mode, the camera will be adjusting the exposure during the time lapse and that will give you some bad effects. And if you're using autofocus, it'll be trying to find the focus the whole time and you're not going to want that either. So now that you've got the settings right on your camera, Let's set up the distance to move per shot, and we'll use the tooth method to do that. And again, the tooth method is a great rule of thumb, but sometimes you'll want to adjust it as well. For example, one tooth per shot is great for general movement, but if you have a subject that's close to the camera, that movement might seem a little choppy. So you might want to try a half tooth per shot. For this scene, we're going to go one tooth per shot. Let's set up our distance per shot. We don't need our shutter cable attached at this point, and if it's there, you're gonna take some unnecessary shots. So let's just put the interval to three seconds while we set this up. We'll set the actual interval in the next step. Now let's set the distance per shot to something low. Let's try 0 0.20 inches per shot. So now after each three second interval, the motor will move. So I'll toggle over to on off, press up or down, and we'll, our movement will start. Now I'm going to pay attention to how many teeth it moves per shot. 
It's not going far enough to reach one tooth per shot yet. So I'm going to increase the distance value a little bit and see how that does. Getting really close. A little bit more. There, just about perfect. So our distance per shot in this case will be 0.31 inches per shot. Now let's set the interval. The interval is the time between shots. This parameter will really affect the way your time lapse looks. When you take a shot with a DSLR camera, the exposure takes a certain amount of time depending on the settings and the speed of your camera. Then before the image is saved to the memory card, the camera processes the photo, storing it briefly in a temporary memory space called a buffer. The time it takes to process the image and transfer it from the buffer to the memory card depends on the speed of your camera and memory card. When you choose your interval time on the MX2 or any standard intervalometer, the interval that you choose needs to be longer than this exposure and buffer time. If the interval time is shorter than this, you'll miss shots during the time lapse. So the first thing to keep in mind is to set your interval for longer than the exposure and buffer time. Now, in continuous mode, setting the interval is really simple. With shoot, move, shoot, setting the interval is a little more complex because there's a cycle involved. The first part of the cycle is firing the exposure, then there's the exposure delay, then there's the motor movement, and then the cycle repeats. So the first thing that the MX2 does is send a fire signal to your camera that causes an exposure. On the MX2, the exposure time parameter tells how long to fire the exposure for. This is essentially how long to trigger the exposure button. For most cameras, setting this to 75 to 100 milliseconds is enough to properly fire an exposure. To do that, I'll press enter, scroll down to camera, press enter again, scroll down, I'll find exposure time, I'll press enter, and mine's already at 100. I'll press enter, and I can hit right twice to get back to the home screen. You don't want your motor move to occur during the exposure, and you want there to be time for the image buffer to clear before the next exposure. So the next step is to set the exposure delay. One way to find the right setting is to take a shot and count how long it takes for the exposure to complete and the image buffer to clear. You'll want your exposure delay to be a little bit longer than that takes. For me this took just under one second, so I'll set my exposure delay to 1000 milliseconds, or one second. So I'll press enter, scroll down to camera again, enter again, this time I'll scroll down to exposure delay, and it's at 100, and I'll hold down the up button until I get to 1000. I'll press enter to save the value, and the right button three times to return to the home screen. And then the next part of the cycle is the motor movement. That time will be really quick for a short move, or it'll be longer for a longer move. The MX2 automatically calculates how much that time will be. So the exposure time, the exposure delay time, and the time it takes for the motor move will all make up the minimum interval time that you can set. If I scroll down, the lowest I can go on this interval is 1.5 seconds, which takes all three of those into account. If I increase the distance per shot, the minimum interval begins to increase also, which takes into account the longer motor move time. But I'll put my distance back to 0.31 inches per shot, which in this setup is one tooth per shot. To further make a point, I'm going to increase the exposure delay to 2000 milliseconds or two seconds, and our minimum interval which was 1.5 seconds, will increase as well. So now our minimum interval, you can see, is 2.5 seconds. To decide on the interval time to set for your time lapse, it really depends on the subject and your desired effect. To show the frenetic energy of a group of people, a few seconds can work. To show more change over time, like the movement of shadows, something like 20 to 30 seconds might be a good choice. Now for this example, I want to use 20 second intervals to really emphasize the movement of the light and shadows over this abandoned car. So I'll set the interval to 20. Now during this cycle, the MX2 will trigger an exposure for 100 milliseconds. 
then pause for the exposure delay of two seconds. Then the motor will move, and the rest of the time will be spent waiting for the end of the 20 seconds before repeating the cycle. Now that that's all set, let's do some last adjustments. Make sure the focus is good. Make sure that no cables are gonna catch on anything. Make sure your tripods are stable. And when you're ready, move to the on-off toggle and press up or down. And we're good. Let's take a look at the finished product. So that's shoot, move, shoot mode. In future tutorials, I'm going to show you some more advanced features of the system. To find out more information, you can go to dynamicreception.com.